This is another important example for this part, parametric motion. Um, whenever we have a disc which is rotating on ground without any slip. So in this problem, we have a disc is rotating with angular velocity of omega and in general with angular acceleration of alpha and there is no slip between the disc and ground and the question is what's going to be the velocity of point A an arbitrary point on the circumferences of this disc and also the acceleration of it so in this problem it is assuming the velocity of the center is VO I'm going to make it, and also it is assuming it is constant, but I'm going to make it more general. And I'm going to assume acceleration of the center is AO. Now with these assumptions, uh, the question again is, what is the velocity and acceleration of point A? And point A is shown with this angle, theta, the angle of this radius with, uh, with the horizontal direction. So to calculate the velocity and acceleration of that point, again, I can write, uh, I can find um, uh, the coordinate of this point A in terms of theta and also the location of the center of the disk. Then by taking derivative from those equations, I'm gonna be able to find ex uh, velocity and acceleration of point A. So we have the system of coordinates and I am showing the location of point O with x naught. So, x of point A is going to be x naught minus r times cosine of theta, right? This distance. So, let's write that down. x of A is equal to x naught minus r times cosine of theta. We can do the same thing for y of it. y of a is going to be r plus r times sine of theta, this distance. So y of a is r plus r times sine of theta. Now by taking derivative from these equations, I'm going to be able to find velocity of a in the x direction and also in the y direction. Quite simple. Derivative of xa is xa dot, means velocity of a in the x direction, is equal to derivative of x naught. x naught is the location of the center. The derivative of it is going to be the velocity in the x direction, right? So x um, o dot is vo. Uh, derivative of cosine of theta is theta dot times negative sine of theta, right? We have another negative here, so I'm going to have plus r theta dot sine of theta. We can do the same thing for the other equation. Y a dot velocity of a in the vertical direction is equal to r is constant, the derivative of it is zero. Derivative of sine of theta is theta dot times cosine of theta. So r times theta dot times cosine of theta. Okay. So using this equation, I can find velocity of any point on the circumferences of this disk. For example, if I want to find the velocity of this point, the only thing I need to do for this point, theta is equal to 180 degree or pi. If I replace theta with 180 degree and put it in this equation, then I'm going to be able to find x dot and y dot of this point. And uh, uh, same thing for any other point, right? Before finding the acceleration of A, which we are going to be able to find it by taking another derivative from these equations, let's um, talk about one specific point which I'm going to get very important results from it. Look at this point of the disk which is in contact with ground. What is the velocity of that point? So if you look at this point, let's call it P, 
this point of the disk is momentarily is in contact with ground. What's going to be the velocity of it in that point, in that specific time? The velocity of that, that disk, uh, uh, that point on the disk, is zero in that moment when it's touching the ground. A moment later, it's going to be up in the air and it's going to have some velocity, right? But the velocity of it, we know for a fact, it's a physical thing, um, the velocity of it must be equal to zero in that moment because it is in contact with that point of the ground and there is no slip. Because there is no slip, the velocity of this point on the disk is going to be equal to the velocity of the same point on the ground, which the velocity of it is zero. So velocity of P is equal to zero. And why that is important? If I want to investigate the velocity of this point of the disk, I should put theta to be equal to 3 pi over 2, right? Theta for point P is 3 pi over 2. Or you can actually put it negative 90 degree 2, negative pi over 2 to show the point P, right? Uh, let's do that and see what happens. For point P, theta is equal to negative pi over 2. So, x dot of it, x dot for point P, based on this equation, is going to be velocity of the center of the disk plus r theta dot times sine of theta. Sine of negative 90 degree is negative 1. So this is going to be negative r theta dot. And we know the velocity of point P must be equal to 0. For the other equation, y dot of point P is equal to r theta dot times cosine of negative 90 degree. Cosine of negative 90 degree is equal to 0. So y dot of p is going to be equal to 0. This equation is not going to give us anything, but this one is very important. V um, of the center of the disk minus r theta dot is equal to 0. So velocity of the center of the disk is equal to r theta dot. This is a very important equation. It says whenever we have a disk with no slip, if we have no slip between the disk and ground, and the disk is just rotating, rolling, then velocity of the center of the disk is going to be equal to r theta dot. And theta dot is nothing uh, different than omega, the angle of velocity of the disk. So it's going to be equal to r times omega. So we have this equation for a rotating disk with no slip. Velocity of the center always is equal to r times omega, angular velocity of the disk. And because this equation is valid all the time, we can take a derivative of it too. The derivative of velocity of the center is acceleration of the center is going to be equal to derivative of omega is alpha, angular acceleration of the disk. Okay, So acceleration of the center of the disk is going to be r times alpha as well. So these are quite important equations for a rotating disk without slip. So we, we should use these equations whenever we have uh, this condition. Let's go back to the problem again. So we found the acceleration, uh, we found the velocity of any arbitrary point on the circumference of the disk. Of the disk. By taking another you know, derivative of those equations, I'm going to be able to find the acceleration of that arbitrary point A. Uh, let's take a derivative of this one first. Acce um, x A dot, if you take another derivative, it's going to be x double dot A is equal to derivative of velocity of the center is going to be acceleration of the center derivative of r theta dot sine of theta it has two parts theta dot and theta both of them are changing with time so the derivative of it is going to be 
derivative of the first part times the second part plus first part times the derivative of the second part. So derivative of the first part is r theta double dot. So I'm going to have plus r theta double dot times sine of theta. Derivative of sine of theta is theta dot times cosine of theta. And if you multiply it to this, I'm going to have r theta dot squared times cosine of theta. Same thing for y. y a double dot is equal to r theta double dot times cosine of theta. Derivative of cosine of theta is negative theta dot sine of theta. So minus r theta dot squared times sine of theta. You can use this equation to find uh, acceleration of any point on the circumference of disk. For example, if you want to find acceleration of this point or this, for example, this point, uh, you need to use the same equation by replacing theta is equal to 90 degree. If you want to find acceleration of this point by replacing theta with pi, you are going to be able to find acceleration of this point. Uh, again, another interesting point is point P, the contact point. We said the velocity of it is zero, but how about the acceleration? Is acceleration of P is equal to zero or not? Let's check it. Again, for point P, theta, you can replace it by three pi over two or negative pi over two. Both of them are the same. Let's go with negative pi over two. So by replacing theta with negative pi over 2 in these two equations, I'm going to be able to find the acceleration of point P. X double dot of P is equal to acceleration of O um, plus R theta dot sine of negative 90 degree. Sine of negative 90 degree is negative 1. So it's going to be negative R theta double dot, cosine of negative 90 is zero. So this term is gonna be equal to zero. So acceleration of P in the X direction is X, uh, AO minus R theta double dot. But theta double dot is alpha, angular acceleration of the disk. And look at this equation. It says AO is equal to R times alpha or R times theta double dot. So a o minus r theta double dot is going to be equal to zero. So there is, uh, for point P, there is no acceleration in the x direction. How about y? How about y direction? Uh, y double dot of point P based on this equation is going to be equal to cosine of negative pi is zero. So this term is zero. How about this one? Sine of negative pi uh, negative pi over 2 is negative 1. So multiply to that negative, positive r theta dot squared. Or we can replace theta dot with omega, r omega squared. And this is not equal to 0. What's the meaning of that? If you look at this point, point P, the contact point with the ground, Acceleration of it is not equal to zero. It's going to have an acceleration upward toward the center. And the magnitude of that acceleration is r times omega squared. That's all.